I, no, I brought up four kids. Uh, I'm not perfect by any means. I mean, nearly perfect as a father, probably. Um, but this sanitising of everything, this overprotection, this wrapping in cotton wool, this nobody can lose, nobody can be called any funny names in cartoons, blah, blah, blah. It's, a, it's exhausting. And B, all it seems to be doing is increasing the amount of anxiety in kids. All the figures show the situation's getting worse, not better. I would argue this strategy hasn't worked. It's had the opposite effect. Yeah, it's utter madness. I mean, what we seem to be doing as a society now is making our kids into little hypochondriacs to worry about everything, to mm. police their own language at the time they should be learning how to develop their communication skills, to see everything through the prism of race, to see everything through the prism of gender. And then at the same time, the things perhaps we should protect them from, adult fetish, pornography, we're, we're foisting upon them at an alarming rate. And I don't understand what children are supposed to be anymore. Mm. Are they supposed to engage with this adult world of critical race theory and uh, extreme adult content? A hundred genders. There, there, yeah, there is no more innocence. Safeguarding has gone out the window. All right, Paula, we've discussed a lot of these issues, mm. all right? And I get that some kids are anxious. I've met quite a few kids who have a lot of anxiety problems. I think a lot of it is social media driven. I think a lot of it is dopamine driven, that they're exposed through social media to a constant barrage of imagery from wars and other things, which we would simply would never have seen yes. when I was a kid. So I think that cannot be overlooked, this constant sensory overload impacting negatively. And yet all the statistics will show young people, if they calmly explained, there's never been a better time to be alive, actually. But the statistics will also tell you, Piers, about the suicide rate amongst children, about how their mental health is suffering, about how children are being bullied, both personally and online in the social world, mm. social media world. And so when we look at the Beano, what surprised me about this story is that we weren't applauding what the Beano were doing. We weren't you know, saying we weren't championing what they were doing, which is to stop children from calling each other names because that's not appropriate. Well, you it's think not, it's going to stop because the Beano stops using names? I mean, come on. But it, well, yes, I do actually, because it's teaching children that it's not appropriate. And you call somebody by their name, which is Frank, John, Paula, or Alex. You don't call them Spotty. You don't call them Darky. You don't call them Fatty. You call them by their name. And so, what you are doing by, uh, by what the Beano is doing is acknowledging that it's anachronistic in its style, and that it shouldn't be. That it should be taking responsibility for providing a positive message for children. Stop being mean. Children. Yeah, but the trouble is, life is tough, Ava. And life is very mean. You know, I always remind people of the Rocky Balboa speech to his son, who's a spoiled, entitled brat in the sixth movie. And eventually Rocky loses it with him in the street and says, look, life is hard. It will beat you down, right? And the challenge of succeeding in life is how many times you can get back up and keep moving forward. It's not how hard you can punch. It's about how hard you can get punched and keep going. We know this. And I, my argument is I think we're just not preparing kids properly for the real world. And, and trying to create this kind of Barbie-style utopia where no one's mean, no one uses mean words, all that kind of thing, means you basically have to airbrush now every work of literature going back in history because it was all full of mean stuff. No, I think you're it was, it was. Come on. From Roald Dahl to the Beano, they're all getting censored. Right. But I don't get it. I don't get any of it works. I think it's quite obvious that parents probably don't want to sit down in 2023 and read a bedtime story to their child about, you know, mm. fatty and spotty. I think it's probably Mark. I do. Hang on, I think it's probably market forces that have dictated it and you love the free market. And I think they've probably looked at it and gone, do you know what, Beano not really being consumed anymore. Mm. Why don't we try to get this, you know, somehow purchased and back in schools, back at bedtime. And they, that's, this is how they've responded. Well, let me throw this back at you. My daughter calls, she's 11. She calls me fatty all the time, right? And does this to me all the time. Good, it makes me go to the gym. Didn't know this morning. <laughs> I was actually, that's very, very different from I was actually Barbie pressing story. this morning to, to uh, female trainers. I mean, this is, how I, this is how, I, how I flow. But the point is, I'm not offended mm -hmm. when she does that. I think it's funny, right? It used to be you could laugh at stuff like that. But what we're now in, we're now in a world where Cosmopolitan magazine, one of the most influential magazines for young women in this country, puts a £305 model, model on the front cover and doesn't mention anywhere in the text, either on the cover or inside, that this is morbidly obese and very dangerous. OK. It's, we celebrate being incredibly fat. But if you dare to use the word 
fatty in the beano about a fictitious character. All hell breaks loose. The sensitivity police get called in. It all has to be changed. Explain to me how that is good for society or good for the well-being of young women who think that being 305 pounds when you're five foot two is a great thing to be. It's body positive. Because okay. no one's got the gumption to go, sorry, you are morbidly obese, you're going to die. And by the way, if you all want to be this fat, you're all going to die too. But then we should have done that for the models who are 80 pounds and mm. six foot tall who were on magazines for 20 years and gave, you know, the whole world eating disorders. I said the same thing about the, you know, the size zero yes, campaign. I said that was any, wrong too. There was never any warning on there of how women achieve that body frame. No one ever talked about the smoking. Never, no one ever talked about the drug taking or the excessive dieting. None of that ever appeared in a magazine. And Piers, I guarantee your daughter, when she calls you fatty, and you have that lovely little inside joke. You're not calling fatty. No, but you have She's allowed to, so you can't. But when you have a good joke about it and you're having, you know, yeah. this nice, lovely moment, I guarantee you didn't teach her that word. That's probably something she's picked up and now you enjoy and you have a nice laugh. Yeah, you know what she's you picked it up? you didn't teach her that. She's picked it up because actually kids do that kind of thing. They're kids, yeah. right? They're not going to stop because the beanos changes it's everyone's strange. name. If you taught her that word, wouldn't it? If huh? you were at bedtime and you taught her that word from the beano book, that would be a bit strange. I just think I've tried to teach my, all my kids. Just don't worry about... The old, my, my mother always told me, you know, we talk about the patriarchy. I lived in a matriarchy with these wonderfully strong women in my family, my grandmother, my mother, my sister, my daughter's inheriting the same thing. And it's just that sticks and stones will break your bones, oh, but words please. will never hurt Come you. On, You're please. very much a, never mind sticks and stones, words are far worse. They're not. But They're please. literally not. Please. And you know that that's not true. I do that's not a, know it's true. That's, I think that's a really dangerous theory to push. No. We know that words hurt. We know that because our law recognises that fact, that people are often mistreated with words and that it can impact on their lives. We know that bullying, which doesn't have to include physical attacks, mm -hmm. When we're talking about a verbal assault on somebody, it can often have the same threatening and intimidating effect as it could if you were physically assaulted. Mm. So I know, to, but my point well, is, if you say, I you know. Know, well, then if you say you know, then we need to acknowledge that because they are viewers are... watching this yeah. who think it's appropriate to stand over a partner and shout abuse at them in their face, or to even Don't whisper, it, or to even whisper it in their ear. Don't it, know there's any because viewers. Some, because my viewers are not those sort of people. Uh, let's. Oh, absolutely not. I would hope that they, I'd hope that they're not. I have a discerning audience. I'd hope that they're not. Um, but Sadiq Khan recognises right. that abuse can be verbal as right. well You're as You're never going to persuade me that verbal uh, mockery and stupid phrases is ever going to come close to physical violence. Well, maybe Meghan Markle might be able to do that. Well, Meghan Markle dishes it out like anyone I've ever seen in my life. She thinks it's fine to call the royal family a bunch of horrible racist scumbags no. and make hundreds of millions of dollars. You never complain when she does that. But you or you that only complain if people say how disgusting. But you say that that is not appropriate, and that's exactly the example that I wanted you no, to no, give. No, no, you're missing it's my point not completely. Appropriate you're missing to my use point. language But you're that not would going to sanitise somebody. the world, Paula. You're we, not. We, we, you're not going to stop to people sanitize. being mean. We don't the have to sanitise the world. Is we a can mean teach place. people to be kind. All right, let's teach people. What about teaching people to just stay? the bleeding obvious so uh in the women's world cup it's called the women's world cup we have a new superstar the canada midfielder quinn goes by the name quinn wasn't the name that quinn was born with but quinn has been heralded celebrated this week as the first transgender non-binary footballer to play in the women's world cup to which my response when i read this was hang on a second hang on is she is she but is she, they, whatever, is she a biological male? No, no, it turned out she's a biological not, female. Not she, so. So what is she? Well, whatever they'd like to go. Let's go. Well, hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Just to be clear, just to be clear. I think, oh, Quinn, I haven't asked a question. They and Quinn. I haven't asked a question yet. She's a, they, they. she, is a transgender non-binary. Mm -hmm. What is that? Well, How can you be transgender Quinn, and non-binary? Because that's what they are. I but thought non-binary meant you were neither you know one what, nor the you other. Know what Quinn also is is an Olympic. No, but hang on, medalist. hang on. Sorry, I, so, thought, I thought transgender meant you, you literally okay. male well, to female, female to male. Turns out that non-binary is not the same well, as transgender. I, would, or it is. I don't want to put words in their mouth, but I would say that's probably because they're not allowed to take the correct amount of testosterone because they are still playing in the women's team, and so I would assume no, they are saying they're non-binary. Any testosterone. No, doesn't want to exactly, be. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. So I, Quinn doesn't want to be male. Because Quinn can't compete. Quinn is a Quinn female playing against females, but now doesn't want, want to identify because as a woman. Because you won't let her play on the male I'm team. Saying, no, no, you're, the, on the male you're missing team. the point. She doesn't want to play on the male team. But she doesn't, she's not actually they trying. They might. To, Quinn might like no, to do that. No, Quinn wants to be a 
an ex-woman, Alex. Who, hang on, Paula. You. Hang no, no. He's upset Paula, about this. Stop, stop being you, mean by interrupting. <laughs> I'm, coming to, I'm coming to Alex. Alex, I just want to get my head around this. She's a <laughs> transgender, non-binary ex-woman. So my question is, if you're no longer identifying as a woman, what are you doing playing in the Women's World Cup? Not my title. That is the official title of a tournament. She doesn't qualify. They, they don't qualify, even though there's only one of them. They don't qualify for the Women's World Cup because they used to be a woman, but now they don't want to be a woman. So now we have to call them they for being a transgender, even though they're non-binary, and they're still playing in the Women's World Cup, and we're all supposed to go, well done, Quinn, what a moment! What a moment! I'm but no one's quite sure. No one's quite then. sure what we're celebrating. Okay. Quinn. Alex, what change. are we celebrating? The rules change all the time. It's like we're bestowing upon people who have gender dysphoria some sort of magical, extra special power that normal people don't have. And I don't care, frankly, mm -hmm. how many scores have they, how many goals have they scored? Mm -hmm. You know, that's more interesting if you're a professional. Paula, person, why is somebody, why is why is somebody who doesn't consider themselves a woman in the Women's World Cup? Explain to me. Because where else are they going to be able uh, to? In a trans or non-binary tournament? I, I, no I, don't, I don't see one. And uh, I certainly don't see I keep one being told there are millions... I keep being told there are millions of trans the people around stage. the world. Great, have your own tournament. So, Piers, if you and I want to set one up, then I'm I'm all for that. Swimming, you've just done it today. Fantastic. So, why don't we do that? Great. So, instead of being so angry... So, you accept they shouldn't be competing? No, I do but, not accept that. In Queen's that. case... No, I do not accept that. Queen's you asked case, me what options did this person have. The Queen? None was my answer. None. Uh, yes. No options did this person yes. have to perform on their world stage. Look at your mournful stage. little faces. You both know this is such. No, crap. you want you do. to be angry, people. Look at your you faces. Don't need to. Just, what you need to do. Why are you not angry? Why are you not angry to protect and applaud? Why don't you want to protect women? Why is it always left to me to protect but women? Women aren't right? protected. Well, They're not. This, this person has gone and they've won an Olympic medal and now they are playing successfully. Doesn't want to be a woman. I don't see what the problem Doesn't is. Doesn't want to be a woman. Hates the idea of being a woman. I don't know about hate their stuff to themselves. Yes. Do you know what I mean? I, 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 my understanding is they've not had any sort of testosterone, so there's no biological. No, no, she's, she's a. The carry on playing in, in the sport. Yes. I don't care. Just stop but telling us all, all about to, your great move to be a to transgender, non binary, well, whatever. Just get Nobody, on with cares. It. Yeah. Nobody cares. Nobody um, cares. Tell you what I do care about. The boss of Nat West, Alison Rose, has now admitted in this Nigel Farage Coots bank fiasco. A serious error of judgment. Turns out she admits she sat next to the top BBC journalist the night before the BBC journalist tweets the real story about Nigel Farage is that actually it wasn't to do with his political views that he was removed from a Coots account. It was because of his financial situation. Turns out to be a total lie because Nigel Farage got under the data rules. He got all the minutes from the meeting where it was clearly his, his political views. Ava, whichever side you're on on this, politically, makes no difference to me. I've got no truck to support Farage at all. He's tried to stiff me over Donald Trump, as I've said. Uh, as I've said, and he's got a lot of pain coming his way for that. So that's a different feud rumbling away. However, on this, I'm a Coots account holder. I rang Coots today and I said, right, come on, have you got one of these on me? And I was told I'm not a politically whatever it is person. So they haven't, they assured me. But they've had a lot of calls from clients asking, am I, am I next for this, right? What have you got on me? Is it my political views? What are you holding on me? This is not right in a democracy like this, that people's political opinions lead to them having their bank account cancelled. It's just not. OK, let's just... Can we make one thing crystal clear, which is that Coots is a very selective bank. Mm. So, it, you know, Nigel Farage was offered a bank account with NatWest. Not West. with Coots. He wasn't going to be just thrown out. I mean, I can't go and get a bank account with Coots. You know, mm. they are very selective. And But, but however... Her briefing, the CEO briefing, uh, the BBC business journalist is absolutely she has to go, doesn't she? extraordinary. I mean, I mean, to me, I can't understand how you can talk about someone's financial matters. Totally agree. I don't understand. Paula, that. on that alone, it's yeah. just a massive breach of his privacy. And I, and I have to say, and it's it's on the record now. You called it last week, Piers, right. when we discussed this. You did. Yeah. Um, and you're absolutely right to have said what you did last week because <laughs> it make it it it's just uncomfortable whichever way you look at it. Completely wrong. Um, Whether and, it's and, somebody in the street or Nigel yeah. Farage or the Queen. I mean, the Queen used to back somebody the Somebody in the street, though. Let's talk about this in proportion. Because no, no, well, like no, no. Just happens I read through every word yeah. of of their meeting, and Alex, the truth is, you know Nigel well. Yeah. The truth is, there was nothing in there other than apparently he knew Donald Trump. 
He liked no Novak Djokovic's tweet. I mean, the whole thing He's was ridiculous. Mad. But, I mean, it's a personal vendetta, isn't it? And the yeah. problem, I mean, what we've actually found out since Nigel told the world about this story is this is happening to countless yeah. normal people. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's really quite dystopian. It's worrying. It's like the Chinese social credit system. Believe what we believe or you can't have access also, to Also, you've got to trust your bank, it's, right? How can somebody who runs one of the biggest banks, banks in the country Brief to a journalist, right. inaccurate, yeah. smearing that's information. And, and that's and the little thing that is to correct it. something, which is that the reason that some people are being turned away from banks now is because they want to deal in cash and banks no longer want to deal in cash. That is entirely different from political views. We've got two different stories here that are getting a little bit... That's muddled. a different issue. No, but, but if we're going to say that, we should... The clarify. clear issue here is if you have certain opinions, it should not be down to a bank mm -hmm. to decide your opinions don't suit their values. It's nonsense. Because, his, by say, the way, I, his, views, his views are shared by about 16 and a half million people well, in this country. To be fair, I do get to choose who I bank with. So, for example, I'm aware of one bank, and I think it's the Cooperative Bank, if they still do, that were very clear and ran an advertising campaign about mm. how they would invest your money um, in environmentally friendly, for example, projects. That's a good thing, and I can choose whether I want to bank right. the co-op or not. They should also have the opportunity to decide no, whether they on. want me as but a customer. But hold on, if this was, if this is, when this is on the other foot, yeah, exactly. and a bakery in Ireland says, I don't want to bake a gay we wedding are, yeah. cake... Oh, all hell, hell broke loose. loose. No, suddenly we're all hell not, breaks We are loose. talking so, oh, about... You know, sorry, it, no. If we're talking about race... If, we, if, if Coop and by says, the way, this has happened to Jeremy... This happened to Jeremy Corbyn. You just imagine what would have happened. If Coots has said, I don't want to bank with you because you're white, or I don't want to bank... Or you you to bank with us because you're gay, then of course we're having a different conversation. Of course. Are we They're not having. Are we you there? cannot compare think, what Coots did oh, come on to that case. All right. Come on. Are we all agreed, though, that this boss should probably not be in her job? Yeah, she should shuffle up. It's, it's, it's definitely a grievance issue, isn't it? And are we agreed that as a result, uh, unlike the theme of Barbie, women shouldn't really be put in top jobs? Because <laughs> <laughs> they, just, they just can't be trusted. <laughs> To City Calm would say, Mate. We haven't even got around tonight. I actually think Sadiq Khan's onto something there. Because when I'm with my village mates, we do sometimes, if somebody crosses a line, it's inappropriate. Yeah. Someone will go, Mate, come on. It is did. actually quite a good little certainly in the villages. Mate, come yeah, on. Are you defending Sadiq Khan? Yeah. This is, this is a I've agreed thing. with him twice running. Last night about pollution. He's bang on about pollution. Ever since I got air purifiers in my house, I'm a different beast. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. It's transformed my health. Mm -hmm. Just living in a very polluted area in London, I now have air purifiers, don't go out when the air's bad, and, and I feel great. And I tell everyone who's out there who's got problems with red eyes, streaming, sinus, all that stuff you think may be hay fever, mm -hmm. I bet it's pollution. Mm -hmm. Go and get air purifiers, shut the windows, only go out when your app tells you to. Trust me, you'll feel exactly like I do. I'm going to get Piers a Just Stop Oil. Yes! Uh, jacket. Let's not I go like too it. far. Just right, thank you, Pac. Uh, good to see you.